Hi, and welcome to the Automation Station by PLCMentor.com. Hello, this is Russell White, and today I'd like to come to you and talk about PLC programming languages and which one should you use. Now, if you want to know more about the different programming languages and how to use them, we have plenty of information on the PLCMentor.com website. The five different PLC programming languages that are considered standard are ladder logic, function block, structured text, sequential function chart, and instruction lists. So I'd like to discuss a little bit of these as they pertain to the Allen Bradley PLCs. And you'll find that things are pretty similar across different PLCs. Let's start at the bottom of the list, of course, because I feel like it, and talk about instruction list programming. The Allen Bradley processors don't really have a pure instruction list programming. You'll find Siemens processors, and you'll find it's very popular in some other countries to program using instruction lists. You can find a version of instruction list in the Allen Bradley processor. All right, so maybe I'm forcing this a little bit, but uh, as far as AB goes, this is about the only thing I can find that is like an instruction list programming. So if I double click on this rung, you can see the instructions that make up this rung, the branch start, and you can see the branch end, and XIC for an open contact. This is basically instruction list programming. In fact, I like to actually, if I am programming, I will come in here and I will XIC and OTE and just kind of fill in the blanks as I go on. So you can actually program like that from the keyboard. Next, let's talk about sequential function chart programming. Now, this is great for batch programming, and it is a easy to kind of see what's going on and get a feel for it. It's a little more complicated than some of the other programming languages, but it's very useful. The sequential function chart language is used for when you want to sequence through a series of events. So as for this right here, this program was for a reactor control. So we were charging and we we're changing valve positions depending upon what step we're in. So it's really, really nice when you want to sequence through step by step. You have what happens in the step, the actions that happen in the step, the transitions to go to the next step. And it's a very organized way of being able to see what's going on in your process. You can obviously do this in in other ways also, but a sequential function chart is really made to make an easy, well-defined step-by-step process. Next, let's talk about structured text programming. Now, structured text programming, you'll find a lot more like a high-level language. So if you're familiar with some kind of other programming language like C or, or even going back in the old days like BASIC, then this will be something that'll feel comfortable to you. So structured text programming is the one that looks most like what other programmers might see as a high-level language. And in that respect, it actually is a good bridge when you need to have someone who's used to programming and C used to programming in another high-level language to be able to come and feel comfortable adding some routines into your program. Like, for instance, this particular program here was used to interface with a SCADA system and be able to have information go up to an MES system and be available for logging and record tracking. This concludes part one of PLC Programming Languages. Make sure you're subscribed so that when part two is posted, you'll be notified. So go ahead, leave that comment, click subscribe, click like, and click that bell so you get notifications when we add our new videos.